through the looking glass and what Alice found there. Chapter 7 The Lion and the Unicorn The next moment, soldiers came running through the wood. Alice hid behind a tree and watched them. She thought that they were very clumsy. When one fell down, several more always fell over him, so that the ground was soon covered with soldiers. Then came the horses. They had four feet, but however, they fell too. Once Alice got out of the wood, she found the white king. He was sitting on the ground and writing something in his notebook. Did you meet any soldiers, my dear, when you came through the wood? asked the king. Yes, I did, said Alice. I couldn't send all the horses, because two of them are in the game, and I haven't sent the two messengers. They are both in the town. Just look and tell me if you can see them. I see nobody in the road, said Alice. I only wish I had such eyes, the king said, to see nobody, and at that distance. Alice was still looking along the road. I see somebody now, she said at last, but he's coming very slowly, and how funny he goes. Not at all, said the king. He only does it when he's happy. At this moment the messenger arrived. He was out of breath and couldn't say a word. He could only wave his hands and make the fearful faces at the poor king. Who did you meet on the road? the king went on. Nobody, said the messenger. Quite right, said the king. This young lady saw him too, so nobody walks slower than you. I do my best, the messenger said. I'm sure nobody walks much faster than I do. He can't do that, said the king. However, now you can tell us what has happened in the town. I'll whisper it, said the messenger. He got close to the king's ear. However, instead of whispering, he shouted, They're doing it again. Who are doing it again, she asked. The lion and the unicorn, of course, said the king. Fighting for the crown? Yes, said the king, and the joke is that it's my crown. Let's run and watch them. And they ran, Alice repeated to herself, as she ran the words of the old song. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all around the town. Some gave them white bread and some gave them brown. Some gave them plum cake and drowned them out of town. Does the one that wins get the crown? she asked as she started to get out of breath. Dear me, no, said the king. What an idea! Finally they came to a great crowd. In the middle of that crowd the lion and the unicorn were fighting. There was a pause in the fight, and the lion and the unicorn sat down panting. The king cried, Ten minutes for refreshments. I don't think they'll fight any more today, said the king. For a minute or two, Alice stood silent. Suddenly she cried, Look, look, it's the white queen. She's running across this country. How fast those queens can run. There is some enemy after her, I think, the king said. That wood is full of them. But aren't you going to run and help her, Alice asked. Oh, no use, said the king. She runs very quickly. At this moment, the unicorn walked by them with his hands in his pockets. I was the best this time, he said to the king. A little, the king said nervously. But why did you pierce him with your horn? It, I didn't hurt him, the unicorn said, and he was going to leave when suddenly he saw Alice. What is this? he said at last. This is a child. We only found it today. I always thought they were fantastic monsters, said the unicorn. Is it alive? It can talk. Alice smiled and said, Do you know, I always thought that unicorns were fantastic monsters too. I never saw one alive before. Well, now that we have seen each other, said the unicorn, if you'll believe in me, I'll believe in you. Do you agree? Yes, if you like, said Alice. The lion joined them soon. He looked very tired and sleepy. What's this? he said, looking at Alice. Ah, oh, what is it? the unicorn cried. You'll never guess. I couldn't. The lion looked at Alice thoughtfully. Are you animal, vegetable, or mineral? He said and yawned at every word. It's a fantastic monster, the unicorn cried out before Alice could say anything. They decided to have some cake. The king felt very uncomfortable because he sat down between the two great creatures, but there was no other place for him. Then the drums began. Alice couldn't understand where the noise came from. She got up and jumped over the little brook. She looked back and saw that the lion and the unicorn rose to their feet with angry looks that they were interrupted in their feast. Alice put her hands over her ears, trying not to hear the terrible sound of drums. And this is the end of chapter 7. Thank you for listening and subscribe to Kuzdra School.